and let us all that we can to build a better future. Oh, RF, uh, RFK Jr. Uh, brought Dennis Kucinich on. I thought it was a pretty smart and bold move. However, uh, many people in independent media brought up this con- brought this true fact that, look, uh, they're going to be butting heads in regards to a very serious uh, issue that is uh, dominating the news feed, and that is Palestine and Israel. And because of this um, recent change, Israel uh, has been uh, in the main forefront of RFK Jr.'s campaign. He has been unapologetic in regards to his support of Israel. And now I want to pull up this video here, or not video here, this tweet from Brianna Joy Gray in which the news was broken by the New York Times. Dennis Kucinich, who has been critical of Israel's abuses against Palestinians and the U.S. funding of Israel throughout his political career, is no longer RFK Jr.'s campaign manager. RFK Jr.'s daughter-in-law and former CIA officer is replacing him. So, ha, huh, quite suspicious. But I want to play this video of Dennis Kucinich when he was on the Kim Iverson show. Let's play it. There's so much that we have in common with each other. And so I, political parties don't always address that. Uh, and and we have in, much in common with people worldwide. So we have to stop this continual attempt to uh, try to make uh, other groups uh, uh, outcasts, to try to depict people as being less than, to try to make, the, make of them, evoke an enemy of them. And we have to stop that. Because that's a, that's the base of war, you know. We have to create an enemy and then pour our our nation's treasure into this abyss of uh, of a war. We have to stop that. It's it's really we need to be beyond that. That's not who that's not who we should be as human beings. I mean, it's really it, it, it's really revolting uh, to have to see people who truly and sincerely uh, believe that war is the only way. I mean. That might be for them, but don't drag us, the rest of us, in with in 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 with you into a grave. Now those sound like great words, outstanding words, true words. However, uh, I don't think they resonate much with RFK Jr., especially with his stance on Palestine and its conflict, uh, and Palestine and Israel conflict. So uh, in order to bring this up first, let's talk about the article that took place on October 13th, Friday the 13th. Dennis Kucinich leaves Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s campaign. So Dennis Kucinich left his post as the presidential campaign manager of uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and was replaced by Mr. Kennedy's daughter-in-law, a political neophyte best known for her memoir about her tenure in the CIA. What could possibly go wrong? The CIA! An organization uh, that has not been involved in shady operations and assassinations and coups. Say with me, folks, especially the people in the back. What could possibly go wrong? The campaign shakeup comes at a moment of renewed scrutiny on Mr. Kennedy's campaign. The political scion of one of the most influential uh, families in contemporary American politics announced on Monday that he was ending his Democratic primary challenge to President Joe 30330 and would continue his campaign as an independent candidate. Uh, Mr. Kucinich's departure came uh, a surprise even to Mr. Kennedy's press secretary, who was informed of it on Friday afternoon by the New York Times reporter. A subsequent news uh, release, Mr. Kennedy said his campaign had benefited enormously from the political experience of Dennis Kucinich. Mr. Kucinich was not quoted in the release. Mr. Kennedy's new campaign manager, uh, Armilas Fox Kennedy, a former CIA agent, memorist, and documentarian, who in 2018 married Mr. Kennedy's son, Robert F. Kennedy III. Uh, Amaryllis is a woman who is of extraordinary intelligence and drive who I am confident will take this campaign to the next level, Mr. Kennedy said in the news release. Ms. Kennedy has already has already been on the campaign payroll, according to the campaign's financial report, covering the three-month period ending September 30th, which was filed with the Federal Election Commission on Friday. Ms. Kennedy's social media is a hodgepodge of condemnations of American support for and involvement in overseas wars, along with her critical reporting about the country's fight to eradicate illegal drugs. She also posted a eulogy of her family's uh, parent toots oh how sweet but look again support america's american support 
for wars overseas. That's right. Hodgepodge of condemnations. Condemnations. Now, the thing is, it's, it's one thing to be doing all of that and being aware of it. But let's let's go on and uh, talk. Uh, we're not going to talk about Toots the Parrot so much. She revealed uh, a little about her prior involvement in Mr. Kennedy's campaign beyond a July Instagram post urging followers to watch a 35-minute speech of his. Uh, Mr. Kucinich, a former Democratic congressman who twice ran for president himself, has been with Mr. Kennedy, a leading vaccine skeptic and purveyor of conspiracy theories, since it began his run for office in April. He introduced Mr. Kennedy at the Philadelphia rally where Mr. Kennedy announced his independent bid. So there might have been a lot of butting of heads, and I'm probably willing to bet that this is something that uh, maybe caused Dennis to leave this video in regards for RFK Jr.'s thought on Palestine and Israel. So let's play it. My position, first of all, my position, I'm not... I would describe myself. I, I'm anti-war. Everybody's anti-war. But there's wars that are not wars of choice. Now the thing is, again, condemnation. You know, we got got a new got a new campaign manager, and condemnation is usually the, the, in the big book of words called a dictionary, or if you Google it up on the YouTube's or anywhere else, you know, you just got to remember you're strongly disapproving, strongly disapproving. So let's go ahead and play the rest of this. Uh, and those kind of wars are like World War II. We were attacked you know, by, by Pearl Harbor, and we need to respond. Um, the Ukraine war is a war of choice. We shouldn't be in it. And we, we look for wars of choice. What's happening in Israel is not a war of choice. Oh, I support Israel, and I, I'll, I'll tell you why. Israel is our oldest partner. 75 years, it's been our lead partner. It is critical to American national security in the Mideast. It's the only democracy in the Mideast, and it has served a purpose for it. It's like almost like an aircraft carrier in the Mideast. So it's a aircraft carrier. It's the only democracy. Now, I, I do challenge the word democracy when there's been a lot of political scandals and corruption surrounding Prime Minister Netanyahu's administration. Because re remember, folks, I'm going to be playing another video in regards towards what was happening in Israel before this uh, conflict exploded uh, last weekend. So just remember, just remember, folks, it's easy to say the word democracy when you're an ally to a nation. But remember, remember, does it truly practice the words? Does it truly practice the ideal of democracy? Because... A strong argument can be made, a very strong argument can be made, that Israel is not a democracy. For us, the alliance is so close, it's completely surrounded by nations that are not only hostile to Israel, but a lot of them are hostile to the United States. The biggest oil producer in the world is Iran, which is in league with China. Um, and in league, Iran now controls Venezuela. Hezbollah is in Venezuela. The Iranian fleet is in Venezuela. If if Israel disappears, which is the ambition of Iran, the ambition of Hamas, we would lose our beachhead in the Middle East. And again, the key word for the day. I had to, you know, highlight it. But again, then in in the big book of words, in the big book of words that I'm pulling up right here, condemnation. The expression of very strong disapproval. Censure. There is a strong international condemnation of the attack. So the new campaign manager, Miss Kennedy, uh, who is RFK Jr.'s daughter-in-law, condemns our involvement in foreign wars overseas. Well, this whole thing with Israel, uh, RFK Jr. is all on board. And if you remember the videos that were taken by Indie News Network, Roger Meadows, and a few other wonderful independent uh, commentators and reporters who were there covering the uh, protesters, the uh, uh, individuals who are calling out RFK Jr. and his support for um, Israel and its policies towards the Palestinian people, uh, it's quite clear that he is fully, fully on board with the policies of the annexation of more of those lands there. And the thing is, let's be very clear what's happening in Gaza. Full-on bombing, extermination. It's horrific that this is happening. And unfortunately, the indifference by the international community says a lot to me and should say a lot to you about the current state of affairs of politics worldwide. The world is truly cursed and nothing is fundamentally changing. 
I'm going to keep on playing the rest of this and keep my pausing at a minimum. And who would fill that? China. And China would control all the oil, 90% of the oil of the world. That would be a real threat from America's national security. Well, that's one of the reasons. I would say this also. There's a moral case for Israel. Israel's the only country in that part of the world that's a democracy. It's the only country where there's freedom of press, where there's freedom of worship. Uh, Palestinians vote in Israel. They serve they, they hold political office. They serve on the Supreme Court and all the other courts. And uh, that's not true of Jews in the West Bank or Gaza. In fact, or Christians, um, or in any of the other surrounding nations. It's the only place where there's that kind of freedom. And Israel has un, unmatched freedom for women. In Saudi Arabia, you know, you go to a woman. Now we talk about press freedom. Look. An image you can share everything right here. So I just want to pull up this. Talk about uh, free speech. Anything in regards for Palestinian uh, rights has been more or less censored and suppressed all over the Facebook, the Instagram, and, uh, well, Twitter, now called X. Um, I think we've seen a lot of recent posts being covered up and silenced especially what's happening currently in Gaza. Just just want to throw that out there to the RFK Jr. campaign. You go to jail for driving a car. In Israel, there's complete freedom of, uh, for gays. There's a, a, a parade on Pride Day of 150,000 gays in Tel Aviv and again in Jerusalem. At the same time, they were throwing gays off the roofs of buildings in Iran and hanging them from cherry pickers. And... Uh, and if you are a Palestinian and you want to criticize your government, you better be an Israel. Because if you do it in Gaza, your throat will get slit. Mm -hmm. If you do it in the West Bank, you will go to jail and be tortured. It is a, and Israel, you know, Israel right now, what's happening in Gaza, a lot of people don't understand this. Hamas controls Gaza. Hamas has this is not the first time rockets have been since since 2008 every year there's 10,000 rockets that are, that are fired from uh, from Gaza by Hamas into Israel to kill civilians and they're fired where do they put their the rocket bases they're in schools schools elementary schools schools where their kids attend they're in hospitals they're in Boston. They deliberately use civilian population. It's a war crime. Now, let's talk about war crimes. Let's talk about first responders, civilian homes and schools being bombed. It's quite clear. Hey, look, uh, when, when I look at this conflict, I know for a fact there will never be peace. I can't see peace being achieved in my lifetime. And for those of you who have families, your kids will not see that peace, and their grandkids will not see peace. But crimes are also being done by the current Israeli military that will further, further fertilize the grounds of hatred and misunderstanding. And there can be no peace talks. There won't be. No one wants to talk about how Israel has and it's apartheid government, how it has helped fund Hamas. No one talks about that. No one talks about how it has implemented policies that cause further displacement. I want to pull up this video here as a counter to RFK Jr. real quick. Again, Dennis Kucinich leaving. Perhaps maybe he just had enough of RFK Jr. and he just couldn't stomach it anymore. Let's play this video here. And this is an influencer who is from Israel. You want me to support Israel? My, my Israel? Fuck no, never. Absolutely not. Ew, disgusting. Israel. We're talking about the same Israel? My Israel? It's my Israel, by the way. It's mine. I own it. You see, it's my birthright. For those of you who don't know, because I was born a Jewish man, I own the land of Palestine and Israel. It is my fucking blood right. That's not me saying that. That's the state of Israel, by the way. They told me. They told me, hey, man, because uh, you're technically a Jew, Israel's yours. 
It's always been yours. Come on down. Come see the homeland. This is me being a dick. This is the state of Israel literally saying this to me. If you are a Jewish person, they offer you what's called birthright. Birthright. The opportunity to come to Israel for free on the Israeli dime and see Israel. It's a timeshare pitch. It's a fucking timeshare pitch. They want you to come see the city, uh, dance in Tel Aviv, eat some kebabs, kick some Palestinians out of their homes, and then they'll try and get you to move there. And, and they'll do it like this pitch, like it's, oh, it's, it's, it's family, it's unity, it's an Israeli homeland. Nah, guys, it's an apartheid state. Uh, it's the greatest shame of the Jewish people. Uh, it's disgusting. You want me to condemn terrorists? Easy. I condemn the state of Israel and I condemn Hamas, the terrorist organization supported by the state of Israel. That was fucking easy. Hamas is a puppet of Israel, guys. It was founded by Israel. It was funded by Israel with the sole intention of destabilizing Palestine because it's really fucking hard to, for your country to get its shit together when the one political party being funded by your fucking enemy is Islamic terrorists, all right? And that's literally the explicit strategy of the Israeli government. All right, so yeah, I, I denounce terrorism in all forms. I denounce the baby killers, the Israeli state who is bombing a city full of children right now. Gaza's mostly kids, guys. 65% of the population is under 24. Half of them are under 18. It is a fucking city of kids. Every time on CNN or MSNBC or a fucking shit show you're watching in order to see all these kids get killed, every time they list the dead Gazans, half of it's just kids. That's the fucking math. Half of it's just kids. You want me to condemn savagery and barbarism? Fucking easily. Who's the savages? Who's the savages? The people living in the... Now, I want to pull up this again, the video of RFK Jr. speaking. When we look at this conflict, it is continuous. It is ongoing. There is extremism. The only ones suffering are the innocent, the civilians. We've seen the videos on social media. No matter what platform you use, we have all seen the imagery, especially the bombings in Gaza. Not another word from the United States. However, there are reports that Joe Biden is going to be flying to Israel. I know, no, this is an actual thing that the, these reports are coming out where he's supposedly going to be flying to Israel. Yet to visit East, East Palestine, Ohio. But, you know, hey, he's flying out to Israel. So we'll find out here. Just, just want to pull this up here. Just, you know, it's not related to the main story, but. Hey, Biden wants to fly to Israel. Unlike Russia during his trip to Kiev in February, Hamas may target the U.S. president. U.S. President Joe Biden wants to accept an invitation by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to visit the country in a gesture of support. What could possibly go wrong? Let's continue playing the rest of this of RFK Jr. weighing in his commentary, which, again, probably fueled uh, all the initial motivation for Dennis Kucinich to leave. And the Israel is, you know, everybody... Colonel Camp, you know, the, the leading uh, military strategist, probably arguably in the globe, has said Israel does better than any other country in the world at protecting civilian populations. Uh, they have they have high technology that is designed to target military targets alone. Of course, there's collateral damage. You know, if you're going in to remove those rockets um, I, and to get the back, I, you know what Israel's gone through right now. It's 15 9-11s, proportionally. So if you remember what we did after 9-11? Again, look, what happened on that initial attack, barbaric. I don't want to see people die. When I got to quote Donald Trump, I, I want people to stop dying. I want people to stop dying. That That's... That's a great quote. I'm going to keep on using it till the day I die. I don't know if Donald Trump's sincere about using it, but I sure as hell am. And all of this could have been avoided. Decades upon decades of suffering. Maybe if people decided to put aside their differences. Maybe if there wasn't a war profiteering movement amongst the sociopathic establishment. Maybe the world would be different. I don't know. I want to believe in an ideal world, but I haven't seen it in my lifetime. And I don't think it's going to be happening anytime soon, long after I am gone from this world. But when you start saying that this is like a 9-11. Okay, well, I remember the aftermath of 9-11. Oh, no, I'm not going to bring up the cheerful pictures of everyone getting together and rallying around for a just cause. I'm going to remember, oh, we were brought into needless wars. Needless war into Afghanistan. 
a needless war into Iraq. And even after Saddam Hussein was toppled and we got Osama bin Laden, yes, it was continuing on even after the Bush administration, we went from two wars to seven forever wars, ongoing wars for forever and ever. Syria dealing with a devastating civil war. Libya turned into a slave state. Hey, slavery's back. This time in HD. I want to pull up this video again here of the same person. There was a little bit more to it. So let's go ahead and play it. Who's the savages? Who's the savages? The people living in the open air prison who are revolting? Or the people running the open air prison and carpet bombing children? We are not judged by how well we take care of ourselves. We are judged by how we take care of our brothers. And the Israelis have taken their brother and treated him like a dog and beaten him and caged him and denied him food and water and shelter and love. And now when the dog lashes out in violence and anger because the dog knows it's about to fucking die, they then use it as justification to kill their fucking brother. And when the Lord returns, it will look to the children of Israel and he will ask them, where is your brother? Do I support Israel? Fuck no, never. Fuck no, never. Play a little bit more of this uh, video of RFK Jr. I got to tell you one thing, though. This entire election cycle, especially coming up for 2024, any motivation I had, any kind of hope that was there has dissipated. If I did not support those wars, but there was no stopping it. We went and bombed two nations into the Stone Age. One nation that had nothing to do with them. And, you know, it, but it, Israel's in a different position. Israel, this, imagine if Cuba sent, you know, not only rockets over and killed people, but then sent terrorists into our country and, you know, butchered children, raped women, burned their bodies, paraded them. That's an interesting subject. But does anyone want to talk about how our own and again, bring this up at a conservative or liberal barbecue? That's right. I'm invoking both Democratic and Republicans here. Bring up the fact of, hey, did you know that our government helped fund other organizations and terrorist groups in other countries like in Central and South America and the Middle East and all over the world causing coups and regime change wars at the behest of big oil and war profiteers? No one wants to talk about our involvement, how we've destabilized other nations. You know, if you want to talk about what we have done or what another country could do, just remember, we have done that to other countries. We have a long, sad track record of doing that to a lot of countries. To the American people, just remember, our, our, our government, the reason why things are so bad as they are is because our government helped create a lot of these monsters. A lot of these tyrants, a lot of these madmen, a lot of these evil organizations, they were funded by the almighty dollar. No one talks about that. No one wants to talk about that at all. What do you think we would do? If, you know, so there, if, there's no country in the world except Israel that would target 10,000 rockets a year from a nearby country into its population. How does Israel defend itself? They created the Iron Dome. Instead of going in there and stopping it, it, it it's, it's mounted defensive weapons. And there's a lot of propaganda about Israel and about, you know, even the, the right of Israel to be there. And let me just say that, because those who don't know the history, when the Palestinians uh, during World War I were on the side of the Ottoman Empire, just so you all know, uh, there was an empire called the Ottoman Empire. When it was defeated in the First World War, uh, Great Britain, the British Empire at the time, had this big brain idea of carving up the Middle East. In, 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 in the long said history of what could possibly go wrong, volume 1919, um, the reason why the Middle East is what it is, because the British Empire carved it up that way no one wants to talk about that no one wants to talk about that anymore and the, the british the allies beat the ottoman empire the ottoman empire collapsed there was a big area called 
Palestine, that was now unruled. It had no nation. So the rules that the Allies created said whoever in all the areas of the, of the Ottoman Empire, which now is gone, the people who live there will, will, will be the rulers. They, and it was a commission created to say, okay, to the open question, the Arabs and the Jews in Israel um, and Palestine and say, how do you want to do this? Do you want to do a democracy of one country? The Peel Commission said they cannot get along. It would be impossible for them to have one country if the Arabs control it, um, the Israel uh, uh, Jews will be second class as the living would be murdered. Remember, during World War II, the Palestinian leaders, um, uh, 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 Mufti al Husseini, helped Hitler design the, the final solution. They were very, very openly you know, in favor of eradicating the Jews. The Peel Commission said they cannot get along, they have to be divided into two countries. So they took the smaller section, which was predominantly Jewish, 548,000 Jews, 390 Arabs, and they said that would be the Israeli section. And then the larger section was given to uh, to the Arabs. I can see why Dennis Kucinich left. It's making more and more sense. I mean, this is an issue that RFK Jr. will not back down from. This is his firm belief. Um I don't know if his new campaign manager can put a nice little spin on it, but I know Dennis Kucinich has just said enough is enough and walked away. That's simple as that. One, two, three. It would be it would be great to see his thoughts on this current uh what the current trajectory of the RFK Jr. campaign and where it will go in the future. However, however, uh knowing this and what is currently happening in Israel and the fate of Gaza. A lot of questions need to be brought up, and I want to pull up this video here, and I'll be giving my final thoughts on this one. But this is a video from Patrick Bet David. Um, he has like a conservative libertarian show, but a question is brought up about the overall crisis that's taking place there. Now, we all know what's currently happening, the shape of Israel. It is annexed a lot of the more territories from Palestine. Uh, thus dividing the West Bank and Gaza. And these are very secure, qu secure borders with towers and cameras, infantry, infantrymen all over. But how do you get caught off guard when you have these huge, huge walls and these surveillance systems all around? A question is brought up. And it's a little suspicious because you mentioned, because again, in the video, all of you have saw RFK Jr. brought up 9-11. And there are many people who still question, question, and rightfully so. Well, how did how, how do we miss 9-11? Just, just so you know, the Bush administration, Bush Jr., along with Cheney, they were informed that attack was coming. You want to know what uh, Bush Jr. said to his, inf uh, to his uh, intelligence officers? You covered your rear ends. You covered your wazoos. No initiative was taking place to stop it. It could have, it, maybe there was a possibility to stop it. Maybe people were asleep at the switch, or they just chose to let it happen. I want to play this video. I will keep my pausing to a minimum. I'll pause at the halfway point. And if we go dark, I'll put all those things out there. Yeah. How did, how did these guys not know this was taking place? So I've been in Israel many times. The whole country's a fortress. When I first heard this story, I still had the same gut instinct that I did initially. I find this very hard to believe. I've been to that Gaza border. You cannot go 10 feet without running into a 19-year-old with an AR-15 or an automatic machine gun that is an IDF soldier, right? The whole country is surveilled. And so, so let, me let me just kind of go through this. We don't talk about Israeli politics very often, and most Americans don't know this. The last nine months, Israel was on the brink of civil war. It's not an exaggeration. This judicial stuff, there were, there were hundreds of thousands of Israelis taking to the streets because Bibi Netanyahu was basically redefining the Israeli constitution. That's not... Apologies. I will I will rewind that part. But yes, there was a huge political upheaval that was happening in Israel. Despite what the media will show you, Prime Minister Netanyahu was having a little bit of trouble with his government. He was having a little bit of trouble with the people. 
And what better way to calm the people down of, oh my goodness gracious, Cretaceous, we got a crisis here. We must unify around me. Give me emergency powers. I'm not saying that's what happened, but it seems a little suspicious. And it's something that, I don't know, someone should tap RFK Jr. on the shoulder and say, hey, you think this seems a little bit shady? Because it kind of sort of does seem a little bit, oh, I don't know, a little bit shady. It's a little bit questionable. Questions should be asked. Now, of course, in life, there's always that sucker punch that you didn't see coming, and that's fair. But it is a little suspicious that you don't see it coming out of the blue. Let's rewind that again one more time. Fair enough. Right, the whole country is surveilled. And so so let me, ju- let me just kind of go through this. We don't talk about Israeli politics very often, and most Americans don't know this. The last nine months, Israel was on the brink of civil war. It's not an exaggeration. This judicial stuff, there were pr- there were hundreds of thousands of Israelis taking to the streets because Bibi Netanyahu was basically redefining the Israeli constitution. That's not an exaggeration, right? He said the judicial branch has too much power. There were protests planned this week against Netanyahu where they anticipated tens of thousands of people to take to the streets. That's all gone, Patrick. Netanyahu now has an emergency government and a mandate to lead. I'm not, I'm not willing to say to go so far that saying that Netanyahu knew or there was intelligence here. But I think some questions need to be asked. Was there a stand down order? <sighs> was there a stand down order? Six hours? I don't believe it. Israel's the side of New, size of New Jersey. When I took a helicopter ride from Jerusalem to the Gaza border, it's 45 minutes. Wow. Six hours. They're live streaming the killing of Jews. Was Did somebody in the government say stand down? That is- now in the big book of words. Stand down. Just want to pull this up here. Read it properly. Uh, it's two meanings. Withdraw, resign from a position or office. Or relax after being ready or alert. No further action was required. And all units stood down. Just, who knows? Maybe there could have been an order. It's happened. Maybe it was a sloppy mistake. Or maybe uh, opportunity was knocking at the door. Who knows? It is a legitimate non-conspiracy question. The whole country is the IDF. <laughs> the whole country is. Yeah. And you're trying to tell me that they're going to concerts and kibbutzes and schools and by reports, six hours. Let's say it's three hours. That's suspect. Uh, Go ahead, Rob. It's also not like a right wing uh, reporting. This is from the New York Times. The long Thank wait you. for help as massacre unfolds in N- Israel. Nine I can't hours. think of a more liberal yeah. news outlet than the New York yeah. Times. And, and, and by the way, I, I'm actually very pro Israel. So let me be very, I mean, mm-hmm. so I'm not exactly. Well, I think I'm, we all are. No, no, I just want to make sure my position is clear here. But I would, so Patrick, there are other explanations. It's possible that the Netanyahu government was double crossed by bad agents. Okay. That's dark, but it's not as dark as what we're talking about. Okay. Another aspect is that Netanyahu might have traitors in his government, like legitimate traitors that have infiltrated. I was texting with some senior people in the IDF, and they said, Charlie, can't say too much, but let's just say the same problem you have with the left in America we have here in Israel. So there's something to think about, just something to think about, right? Is that maybe there are some people within those intel agencies that aren't as sympathetic. Now, look, this whole idea of the left being an organized institution, like, are you talking about neoliberals? Because the difference between leftists and neoliberals, there, 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 there is a huge difference, a big, big, gigantic difference. Okay, so I think it's important we just don't say left, right? Because hey, I, I've, I'm, I identify as independent left. I've spoken to libertarians and conservatives, and yes, even liberals, socialists, communists, greens, etc. But uh, when it comes down to neoliberals, I think, again, people forget just uh, how devious and how sociopathic they are. And both the Democratic and Republican parties are in the neoliberal think tank sphere. Both parties always have been, always will be. They work together when big oil and the military industrial complex, the prison industrial complex, big pharma or any other lobby group tells them to jump. They'll do it. This is something that the voters need to come to terms with. And it really, really gut checks me seeing RFK Jr. running as an independent, carrying on some policies of neoliberalism with him as well. 
Or maybe, Patrick, maybe they might have gotten a tip. They might have gotten whispers, but no one thought it would be 1,200 Jews dead. That's a potential, right? Because here, here's, the, here's the essence of it. The essence is this. This is the closest thing to the Holocaust that any of us have lived through. But the fact is now Bibi and the Israeli hard right government has a mandate. I got to be careful the way I say this to they're going to try to ethnically cleanse Gaza. (laughs) And that's what's going to be happening here. Let's rewind that again one more time, because with a crisis, you got to appease your critics. And I had a recent conversation with some good friends in, in regards to this. And what probably Netanyahu is trying to do is not only make his government look good, but also see how far he can go before the international community says, hey, dude, could you kind of please sort of maybe stop? Because he's going all the way. We've seen the imagery. Let's rewind that again. The essence is this. This is the closest thing to the Holocaust that any of us have lived through. But the fact is now Bibi and the Israeli hard right government has a mandate I got to be careful the way I say this to they're going to try to ethnically cleanse Gaza. (laughs) I mean, that that's and I don't use that term lightly. Okay, they're talking about basically removing 2.5 million people Mm -hmm. from there. Okay, and honestly, they have a mandate to go seek justice and revenge. They do. There is this idea that they need to have a truce or a peace treaty. That's morally crap after you see women and children be burned alive and dragged to the streets. But there are some serious questions here, Patrick. And let me tell you, my pattern recognition over the last five years has become pretty sharp. COVID, Maui fires, you know, Epstein. When I see a story and it doesn't click, we're, our guts are usually right. And things don't add up. So what can we take away from all of this? What can we take away of Dennis Kucinich leaving RFK Jr.'s campaign? Well, probably his gut instinct was there's no way I can in good conscience keep being associated myself with this campaign as, let's be clear, Dennis Kucinich has a counter opinion to RFK Jr. and his stance towards Israel. And with this overall growing conflict that's taking place in the Middle East, there won't be peace. But you can have your own peace of mind. And maybe that's what Dennis Kucinich wants, a peace of mind just to slowly back away and not be associated. Now, I don't think he's going to be condemning or saying, oh my goodness, what was I thinking being associated with that campaign? Because let's face it, this is uh, DC politics. This is American politics as a whole. Got to walk away from it and still be polite, be kind. However, we cannot ignore what is taking place there between Israel and Palestine. Injustice, horror, and the continuation of hate the continuation of war. And there will not be any kind of peace anytime soon. I can hope that maybe eventually clearer minds will prevail, then maybe there will be a generation that will say enough is enough. There must be a peace in our time. But I don't think we've reached that threshold yet. And I don't think we've yet to have political leaders to actually have the courage and strength to actually see the bigger picture. We are all on this planet together. And until we actually have leaders that will actually fight for a better future, that will actually give a damn, the world shall still remain cursed.